Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, continuing graphics day. We had the Blender release earlier. We had Marmoset Toolbag, in which I said this is probably the best competitor to Algorithmic Substance Painter out there. And I think Mixer may have had their ears burning because they went ahead and they dropped the new release today. So that's what we're looking at today, the new release of Mixer 2020. And I gotta admit, it's not that impressive. There's not a lot new here. Now, Mixer itself is excellent. If you've never heard of it, it is available from, it's from Quixel, uh, quixel.com. Uh, Mixer is completely free for everyone. Mixer and uh, Bridge were both bought alongside Megascans uh, when Quixel was acquired by Epic Games. If you're using it for Epic Games, it is completely free, including the entire Megascans catalog. But even if you're using Unreal Engine, Godot, or whatever, it is still free to use. You just don't have access access to that huge library, but you do get all these smart uh, surfaces that are available in it. And part of this release is there was a bunch more surfaces released. So this guy is cr for creating textures. It's kind of like the whole uh, substance painter and substance designer kind of had a baby. This is about mixing together existing textures to uh, create newer, greater things. Uh, and uh, yeah, so today the release is the 2020.16. Like I said, there's not a ton here in the release notes. The biggest thing here is the mask export. And then also we've got the um, the new smart materials. Again, all of these smart materials, there's something like 250 of them if you do a full install. Those are available for free no matter what game engine or content creation tool you're using on the back end. You can also use Quixel Mixer with your own textures. You can import in your own materials. So even if you are not using Unreal Engine, there's still a lot of value here. So let's head on over to Quixel Mixer. And here we see a TIE Defender that I downloaded from uh, Sketchfab. Uh, not my work, but uh, yeah, it gives us an illustration of what's going on here. And here you can see one of the the, um, the layers that I've applied to it has a mask attached to it. And the big thing here is these masks can now ultimately be exported out. So what you're doing is you're building uh, new materials by creating this constructive layers of things. If you watch the Marmoset tool bag video this morning, it's actually all going to look really, really similar. So I'm going to go in here, create a new mix. We'll call this one YouTube demo. You can work in multiple different resolutions, by the way, up to 8K. I'll stick to 2K so my computer doesn't cry and we won't save our changes. Now, in that particular case, we were using a default mesh. You've got a couple different options here. You can start with a cube or, or so on, or you can come over here to set up and switch it out to, that was a custom mesh that I used right there, or we can just go to the classic shader ball. And that's what I'm going to do. We're going to start this off with a shader ball. And now with our shader ball created, we should probably get something on this guy. So let's start creating our own material. So you got a bunch of different options right here. You can start out with just straight out layers. You can bring in your own map. So for example, if you had an Elbado map you want to bring in, just come on here, load it. You can drop it in like that. So there we go. Uh, so there is our texture just applied to that. Now that's not obviously what I want to do. What I want to do is showcase some of the new smart materials. So you go over here to the local library. The local library, if you want to really break this down, if it's in your local library, you are free to use it however you wish. You do not need to have an Unreal Engine license or anything else. Uh, and there are a number of smart materials in here. The smart materials collection is right here. Let's filter down by just it. Everything here is sortable and searchable and so on. As you can see, I searched for titanium, titanium in the past. You can uh, filter down by different uh, large and small thumbnail sizes so you can look at them all at once. And you got a ton of different smart materials already defined for you. So uh, say we wanted, I don't know, what are we going to do here? Rusted iron. All right, so there we go. Uh, rusted iron was just applied. It is now at the top of the stack right there. And you can see we have rusted iron going through. Now what we could have also done, let's just drop in a straight solid color layer. So this is going to be, uh, let's just make this red. All right, so there you see, we just put red on top of that. And over, that overrode all of the color details that we got here from this rusted iron. And that may not have been what you wanted to see. Now you're still getting all of the uh, normal maps and so on. This is actually a hierarchy of various different things that work together, a number of different masks that work together to create this guy. I could of course just drop this guy down below. And then this map, the rust is basically overriding our red. But what else I can do, and this is where the power of masks come in, is I can add a paint mask onto this guy like so. Uh, and what actually, I'm going to undo that. 
So what I'm going to do is instead do it this way, add a paint mask, but I'm going to hold down Alt. So what that's going to do is create it as a black mask. So that means we're only actually going to get red where I paint the mask. You're going to notice with this mask selected, I now have a selection of paint tools over here. So now we can start painting our, oops, I'm painting in black. Let's switch that out to white so we can actually see through it. Um, we got various different paint brushes available. We can edit out the shape, the softness and the size and so on. And now we can just start sort of swiping through. So there you see, you can just basically start layering in a non-destructive manner, all the things together. So let's just drop in a GFS here. G, F, S, a real Canadian guy. All right, there you go. So you see, that's how these various different layers go together. And then there's there's um, smarter and, and more interesting and, and more uh, detailed layers. So for example, we wanna add a little bit of wetness to this one. We can add a liquid layer on top. And then you immediately see we now have a wet shine to us. We've got control over it over here. Ooh, don't want to play with that one too much. So that's adding way too much wet. All right, let's add just a little bit of, okay. Let's do that by hand. All right, so you can see we can add layers of wetness on this. We've got various different, uh, we can add a noise layer on here, control over the noise available. Uh, we can also add in uh, decal layers. You're going to have to actually have uh, a decal over here. I don't think I actually have any in my settings, but what we can also do with Pixel Mixer, and this is the part where you need to have an Unreal Engine account, or you subscribe to Quixel Mega Scans um, to get access to this. Now we go over here, the de decals, manhole cover. Let's drop a manhole cover in here. If you have access, what we could do is go ahead and pull in something like this guy. Yeah, sure. Let's download it like so. All right, perfect. So now I'm gonna go back over here to my add, uh, which one are you? Yeah, that one right there. We'll grab our manhole. So we now have a decal layer over top of it. And of course, you're gonna to wanna to control uh, how large that is or how see-through that is or where it's gonna show up or whatever. And you can also place it. So we could use placement tools right here. So we could pick the actual spot on the surface, the number of times it tiles so we could have it scaled down and so on. So that's a quick look at what Mixer is all about. Now, the new thing here, again, is the ability to export out these masks. So if you come down here, you look at the bottom, you can actually create, I actually did it by accident there, so let's go ahead. Uh, you can create a new channel here and export things out there. So if I got, for example, uh, let me go to this noise, ch yeah, it's not gonna work, all right, here we go. So back to my liquid channel, come down here, I can go ahead and add custom channels. So I can come down here, add a new channel, and then do like my masks, like so. And since masks are just black and white here, uh, you can actually pack up to four of them in a single channel for export out. So then when you go ahead and export out your project, you can also bring out your export masks as well. So that information is then available in other projects. Now, Quixel will actually have a video up they published today that goes through the entire process of setting up and exporting out these masks. So I'm not going to get into those details. I just wanted to give you a, a bit of a show of what Mixer was all about. In terms of this release, again, there's not a whole lot to go from in the release notes. There's this new mask exportability. And then of course, there are the new um, smart materials here. So we got 64 or something new smart materials, and that's always a nice thing. Now, I don't know if this, because it's sorted by latest, these are actually the new materials, or it's because I just installed it. We're going to get them all. It doesn't really matter at this point in time, because if you go ahead and do an install of Quixel Mixer right now and say add all of the packs, you're going to get all of these materials here. And there's a pretty good broad spectrum of materials here. And then once again, even if you aren't subscribed to, if you're not using Unreal Engine or you're not paying for uh, Mega Scans, which gives you access to a huge number of materials over here, to the point where you probably never need to create another texture again in your life, you'll probably just use something like Mixer to blend multiple different textures together to create what you want. But even if you are not subscribed to this, you have this pretty nice massive library of stuff that ships free with Quixel Mixer. And of course, you can bring in your own assets. The kind of cool thing here is if you bring in and start creating your own surface, this thing is smart enough to try and figure out what the, um, you know, the ambient occlusion and the roughness map and the normal map are in a folder. So if you've got a directory with all of your uh, things in there with a consistent naming convention, it does a pretty good job of auto-populating them and bringing your own textures in. So if you're bringing in a texture from something like CC0 textures or another free online texture source, you can import them in here and have them as part of your local library as well. So uh, even again, if you aren't 
using Unreal Engine and you're not using um, the Megascans Quixel library, there's still a lot of value in picking up and learning Quixel Mixer. Now, maybe this particular release didn't have a heck of a lot new in it, uh, which is kind of unfortunate, but the one I'm really waiting for actually is the multiple texture sets and UDIMs. Uh, hopefully that is soon, but that is today's release of Quixel Mixer 2020.1.6. If you've already got it, it's just basically an incremental step forward. If you have never checked out Mixer in the past, I highly recommend you do so now. Great way uh, to create and um, repurpose existing textures to create some really cool works. All right, that's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.